Um, we've seen a lot of public opinion polls over the years um, that show a growing divide in perceptions about higher education. We would probably agree about that. Um, what do you think contributes to that skepticism about colleges and universities? Well, the most troubling one recently was a, 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 a poll done by the Pew Foundation that found uh, in, in, among Republicans that now, and this happened in a two-year period that there was a shift from people thinking that higher education was part of the solution, part of our future, part of uh, opportunity, now to seeing it as a detriment to that, that they believe that higher education in America is, uh, is eroding prosperity and whatnot. And I think people think that because of some of the points Jennifer made where people feel disinfected, left behind, uh, we've sold this, this uh, you know, belief that higher education is a pathway and then priced people out of it often. I think they also see on campuses around the country and for those of us who are in the public square, uh, this is not an easy time to, to be there. It's, this is where our intense political debates that we're having right now really play out. And so when speakers go to, to uh, college campuses and are spit at and shouted at and beat up, uh, that makes moms and dads in Kings Mountain say, what the heck? And, it's, uh, and, and I think they often see uh, maybe a, not a reflection of their own values, beliefs, and orthodoxy reflected in American higher education. And so we need to work on that. We need to bring that balance back. We need to see all points of view in American higher education so that we can uh, rebut this erroneous belief that higher education is part of the problem. So Ms. Haygood, you spoke earlier at the podium about changing the narrative. I'm using my words, not yours, but okay. really the perception about what it means to be a community college in this continuum and that there's more than one path. And do you think that maybe that helps contribute to the skepticism or changing the narrative can help improve the, the, this kind of skepticism that's going on with our colleges and universities? I do, and I think that part of changing that narrative goes back to the point I was making about being attached to the hip with industry. We need all levels of educators, everything from administrators down to faculty, to be um, engaged with our business and industry to better understand what they're looking for so that we can make sure that we're giving the skills. And that doesn't mean just technical skills because liberal arts education is important to developing critical thinking. And no matter what job you're in, we were with um, representatives from the construction industry on Friday and they need critical thinking skills. And so it's, it spans the, the spectrum. But I do think that we need to improve that connection. And I think a strategy that we all need to be um, considering expanding on is work-based learning so that students have opportunities to both be in the workplace and earn academic credit. And apprenticeships is one opportunity. We're very excited about the fact that the General Assembly had the wisdom to move the apprenticeship program to the community college system this past session, and we're looking forward to effectuating that transfer and growing that program, but there's other opportunities. There are um, internships, the old co-op model, you know, but we need to, I think, expand opportunities for work-based learning. So, Speaker, more from a policy sense, do you have some sense of how we improve perhaps this skepticism that's taking a little bit of hold, as, as President Spelling says, about our colleges and universities, because you spoke so eloquently that we have a great system, flagship institutions, and we're one of the best in the country. So how do we in North Carolina just make sure that skepticism doesn't take hold here? Well, I was on a college campus a few months ago and actually saw one of these protests. People were yelling at each other. It was getting the getting wound up. Somebody looked at me and said, oh my gosh. I said, That's, this, I feel at home. This is like being in the legislature. I don't know what, <laughs> what the problem was. Uh, you know, really I think, I think panels like this and the work of Higher Education Works are key to getting the word out of the great things that are happening in our university. Uh, when I go talk to folks all around the state, I'm, what I'm hearing is for the most, really support for the university when folks know and they understand. It's not only about, of course, education, but the research and development. Look at the dramatic growth of the, of the RTP, but for the universities, that wouldn't be there. Uh, look at, you know, I've always said, if you want to see what spinoff companies that create high-paying, high high-tech jobs, uh, SAS is Exhibit A, you know, that was started, Dr. Goodnight right there at NC State, moved on, developed this, employs you know, thousands of people. You know, when we get into the high-tech, uh, I think the comment was made earlier that, uh, 
Uh, many of the jobs, the governor mentioned this, many of the jobs that folks will have during their lifetime now are jobs that we don't even know about. Nobody's talking about. I mean, just think back 30 years ago, would you have ever thought you would have something like an iPhone? Nobody ever thought of that. That was in the movies and stuff. Remember the James Bond movie where he'd pull the thing out and make the picture of it? It was just science fiction. So what's amazing to me are the things that are yet to come. Well, universities, in terms of the research, in terms of the, uh, the education that's happened there, the studies, they're leading the way. If you look at any kind of development of technology, you can just about always trace it back to higher education being a big part of that. The and of course, what's the pipeline to get those students there? It's starting out all the way from pre-K all the way up. So it's, it's a long-term investment. And I think when folks understand and see what the, what the payoff is by a great university system, they support it. I mean, if, if you went back and tried to single out in North Carolina, our economy, whether it's biotech, high-tech, uh, you name it, it all comes back to where the universities are.